Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over the Ohm's Law experiment. So let's get started. Now, the experiment on Ohm's Law is one of the compulsory experiments that the SQA want you to be able to describe in the exam. So we're going to go through the stages of the scientific report for the Ohm's Law experiment. So starting with the aim, the aim is to find the relationship between current and voltage for an ohmic conductor, i.e. a resistor in this case. But you could also say something like to investigate how the current affects the voltage for an ohmic conductor. Moving on to the method, the equipment you would need first of all is a power supply, a resistor, ammeter, voltmeter and connecting wires. You would then set up the circuit as shown here. So we'd have our power supply, our ammeter and our resistor in series and then the voltmeter in parallel with the resistor. And there's a picture of what that would look like in real life. So you've got your power supply, your ammeter and resistor in series and then a voltmeter in parallel with the resistor. And this will allow us to measure the current passing through the resistor and the voltage across the resistor. Here's some brief steps for the method of what you would actually do. So starting at zero amps, you would increase the current through the resistor in small even increments by adjusting the voltage on the power supply. You would then note down the evenly spaced current readings on the ammeter. So you would come up with set values of current that you would want to set the current reading to. And we are saying that you can change the reading on the ammeter, i.e. the current in the circuit, by adjusting the dial on the power supply. So that would be this orange dial here. Once you had written down your evenly spaced current readings and adjusted to each of those, you would measure the voltage across the resistor each time by recording the reading on the voltmeter. So you would look at this reading here and write down that reading. You would then repeat the procedure another two times and take an average, as this is going to make the results more reliable. So here's a sample set of results. It says create a table to record values of current voltage and average voltage. So you would do this during the experiment. So in this example, I've used current in amps where we've gone up in 0.2 amp increments and you'll see there's three attempts for voltage readings there and then an average of all of those voltage readings and the first reading we've taken is at 0, 00 so the average of that is obviously going to be zero. What you would then do is plot a scatter graph of average voltage or mean voltage on the y-axis versus current in amps on the x-axis and it says remember to draw a line of best fit through the plotted points. Now you'll notice here that I've got a straight line that goes through the origin. Yours might not go straight through the origin and that's okay, there would be reasons for that. And your points might not also lie in a complete line, but remember that's the point of a line of best fit, is to fit them through the majority of the points. Our conclusion then from this experiment is that the voltage across the resistor is directly proportional to the current passing through it as long as temperature remains constant. And this is actually Ohm's law. So what do I mean by directly proportional? Well, whenever we have a graph that is going straight through the origin, like this, then that is called directly proportional. This means that as one thing goes up, the other thing goes up. So as our current increases, our mean voltage or average voltage increases as well. It would also mean the opposite, so as current goes down, you'll see that the mean voltage goes down as well. So whatever happens to the current happens to the voltage, and that's what we're saying is this directly proportional relationship. But notice how we've said that it's as long as temperature remains constant, and this is key, and it's saying that our resistor has not heated up enough to cause any effects in our experiment, which is what we want. So we're saying as long as temperature remains constant, voltage is directly proportional to the current, and this will hold for any ohmic conductor like a resistor. So Lastly, Ohm's law can be expressed mathematically in symbols as this thing here. So we have V, the voltage is directly proportional to the current I. Just to show you a quick simulation to prove that this is going to be the case. In this example, we're actually changing the voltage in even increments and writing down the current value. And you can do the experiment this way as well. So if we change our voltage to two volts and four volts, six volts, eight volts and 10 volts, you notice that if we were to write down the current readings, then we get a graph that has these points plotted like this. And if we were then to draw a straight line of best fit, you notice that it passes straight through the origin. And it would look like this if you had current on the y-axis and voltage on the x-axis as well. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.